Hey everybody, happy Wednesday morning. Welcome to the 28th annual People First of West Virginia Self-Advocacy Contest Cooking Class Pandemic Version 2. It's nice to have you back in my kitchen. I wish we were all together again, but can't do it again this year, maybe next year. I'm hoping 2022 can have us all together at Jackson's Mill. That would be awesome. But we're going to do it this way instead. And if you want to follow along, this is what came in your packet. It's the recipes for the cooking class. And if you've looked them over, you might think, wow, Dee Dee's lost her mind. She's got all this stuff with cabbage in it. And if you're not a cabbage fan, you may not have been real happy about that. But please stick with me because all the recipes that we're going to go over actually have converted people I know who said they didn't like cabbage to liking cabbage and I think that you'll be kind of surprised about these and it's a simple simple thing that we're going to use what to do with a bag of coleslaw mix so most of you probably have seen these in the supermarket maybe you don't get them because you don't know what to do with them or maybe you just don't like coleslaw in general with the mayonnaise and all that or you just don't want to make it for yourself but this is a pretty economical way and a lot easier work wise to get some cabbage that's all cut up and shredded. This particular one says tricolor and it's got the white cabbage or green and purple and a little bit of carrot. This is what we're going to use for our recipes and we're going to do three different things with these. Two recipes we're going to go over and one that we're going to just if check you get out. the first recipe we're going to work on it is the egg roll in a bowl and it's on the second page in the whole page recipe. Now this egg roll in a bowl, if you like Chinese food, or if maybe you don't like Chinese food in general, but egg rolls you may like a lot because they're just really yummy and different. So this recipe is something that has all the flavors and the goodies of egg rolls, but you get a whole lot more of the filling, which I think is kind of the favorite part, but you don't have to give up the crunchy outside either. So, if you follow along the recipe, the first thing under the instructions is to prepare these egg roll chips. Now, that kind of sounds crazy, but this is what we're going to make, and I made some in advance. And it's really better to make them in advance because that way you can eat as soon as you're done with your other mixture. And you can hear how nice and crispy these are. Now these I made, oops, these I made in the air fryer and you may be able to see behind me back there the black little appliance sitting on my counter. That's an air fryer. If you have one, they're really great and they're really handy and you can make these in a matter of like two to three minutes tops. I literally just cut these in strips. I'm going to show you what, how they come and then I put them in the air fryer, do about one minute at 400 degrees, shake the basket, do it again for a minute and that's it. However, I also included on the recipe the instructions for you to do it in the oven. And you can do that really easily and your chips will come out similar to this where they'll be more flat. They might be even bubble up a little bit and separate the layers. In the air fryer, they kind of do some crazy stuff like this because they blow around while they're cooking. And some of them are just, uh, just plain crazy. But they're fun and they have the crunchy flavor of the outside of the egg roll. Now, hang on, let me hit the fridge and show you what the wrappers look like. So, these come in a package at the grocery store. They're refrigerated, so they're often in the produce section. This is one brand, Frida's egg roll wrappers. You can also use wonton wrappers that are very similar, but they're just a little smaller, like that size. Works fine. Another kind I have here, and well, I'm just having a hard time today. Another kind I have here is Nasoya, which is a vegan um, version. It just happened to be the ones I picked up, and this is what I use today. They're a nice pack of squares. And when you take them out, 
it's kind of like thin sheets of pie dough is what it would remind you of. So you see, you can almost see through them. These are all stacked together. And what I usually do is take two or three or four and lay them on a cutting board, squared up together. And then I cut them with a knife or with scissors into strips. That's all you have to do. If you do them on a cookie sheet in the oven, you might want to spray a little bit of oil or Pam on them, and that helps. But they're super easy to make, and they're basically fat-free, unless you spray a little oil on them. It's still a very negligible amount. So we have our chips ready, nice and crunchy. So the next thing we're going to do is we have meat, ground meat. In this case, I'm using ground chicken. Now you can use ground turkey, ground chicken, and some people like to use traditional ground pork, pork egg rolls. Also, another thing you can do, if you're a big shrimp fan, you can use baby shrimp, even the kind that comes in a can and drained, and you can throw those in and that can be the meat, or they can be in addition to the ground meat that you're using. But I usually use ground chicken. And I've been kind of substituting ground chicken and ground turkey for a lot of other things and um, I've actually dropped some weight in the last several months by making those substitutions. But actually, we kind of like it anyway. Don't really notice the difference using uh, ground chicken or ground turkey. And as far as cabbage goes, by the way, my granddaughter, who's 11, wouldn't touch a vegetable that's in this dish no way if we've had it separately and the first time i made egg roll in a bowl a few months ago for myself she smelled those wonderful asian scents coming around and up the steps and came and asked me what i was making and i told her and i had made something different for her for dinner but i really wanted to try this recipe myself and she said can i have some and i said well, sure of course you can well every since then every time i make this she eats half at least of what i make or more herself she loves this dish so she probably wouldn't touch cabbage in any other form if I offered it to her, but she loves this. So stick with me. It's a really good recipe. So the directions say to brown the meat or cook it at least till the pink is gone and then drain it. But as you can see, this chicken is so lean that I don't need to drain it. So that step I can skip. Now you can find ground chicken and ground turkey in the same place that you find any other meats at the grocery store. Um, usually the turkey is right next to the chicken. All the poultry is usually together. Uh, ground pork you can find in the pork section. And now that I'm finding that almost every grocery store has all these selections, you know, besides just ground beef, you can find these as well. And it's getting easier. Um, I tend to buy a lot of mine at Aldi's, and, uh, but I'm finding that other stores have it also. So if you look at our directions, the next thing is we're going to add onion, which is sliced, sesame oil, and a little tiny bit of vinegar to the skillet, and we're going to cook that until the onions get a little bit tender. So we're going to do the one onion, and I've already sliced it. You can do diced if you want, and I think I have sliced thinly or diced on the recipe. All I did was slice a really nice onion and put it in a little container ahead of time and left it in there. So we're gonna put that in. And by the way, I am using my handy dandy meat chopper. If you remember, we talked about this last year when we were making chili and it looks a little messy, but this thing is wonderful and I use it all the time and I use it for this recipe. So stir that around a little. I'm gonna turn my heat up just a tad. And then we're going to do the sesame oil. Now, sesame oil is something that you probably may not have in your home. Um, I have to tell you that it's probably one of my favorite things. Uh, anytime I want to do anything that's Asian, it smells and tastes wonderful. Um, a small bottle like this, I believe, is $3, I believe. I got this at Walmart. Um, we've been quarantined at my house, so I actually did a Walmart delivery, and I was able to get all the things we needed for cooking class 
delivered from Walmart. And I'm really glad because I wasn't able to go out. So this sesame oil, you can also get toasted sesame oil, which has a little deeper flavor. But this will last you a long time. You don't use very much in most dishes, food or two at the most. Our recipe calls for one tablespoon. And I really wish that you could smell this because it's just got the best, like a nutty smell, kind of, I would say. It's kind of hard to describe if you haven't experienced it. So we'll stir that around. And then we have a tablespoon of vinegar. And that just kind of helps deepen the flavors. It's not much. Um, this vinegar happens to be Bragg's Organic Vinegar. Um, you can use regular vinegar. This just happened to be what Walmart had because it's pickling season and they were out of regular vinegar. So they substituted the organic vinegar. And we're just gonna put a tablespoon of that in the pot. But like I said, any vinegar will work. White vinegar will work, apple cider vinegar, whatever. This just happens to be something that I got sent. So we're gonna stir that all around and let that cook a little bit until the onions tenderize just a little. Another thing then that we're gonna do is we have garlic that's gonna go in. Um, fresh garlic is great. You can peel the garlic and chop it if you like to. You can also do this, which is much simpler and easier. It's minced garlic you buy from the store. You can get it packed in uh, water. You can get it packed in oil. I usually get it packed in water because if I'm using it, I don't always want oil with it in the dish that I'm using. And sometimes I do, so I can add the oil. But this is very simple and you don't have to keep fresh garlic on hand and worry about how to crush it or mince it or whatever. So that's one thing we're going to put in shortly. And actually, we'll just go ahead and mix up the next amount of little kind of dressing that goes with it. So if you check it out here, we've got garlic, ginger, soy sauce, and some sugar. And on step three, we're going to mix those all together so we can put them in the pot once these onions get tender. So we've got two teaspoons minced garlic. It's going to go in here. And I like garlic. So if it's a little above the spoon, I don't mind. And if you guys like garlic, let me know. Just curious who all the garlic lovers are out there. Then we're going to do one teaspoon of ground ginger or ginger paste. Now this is another thing you may not have on hand, but once you find a dish like this you like, you want to get it and it'll last you a long time. There's a couple of choices. And, and I don't know, this is probably in reverse on the screen. This is ground ginger. This was very inexpensive. Um, it came from Walmart also, of course. But I, I also like to use this ginger paste. It costs just a tad bit more. But the neat thing is, this is um, like a fresh ginger that's all smushed up and has a really good flavor. But honestly, in the end of the dish, it doesn't really matter what you use. So today, since I have the ginger paste. We're going to go ahead and put a teaspoon of that in, which is what the recipe calls for. And ginger is just a wonderful flavor. And I, I believe it really has a lot to do with what gives dishes an Asian flavor. And I wish we had smell a vision because this smells so good. So we're going to put that in the bowl. I'm just mixing this all into a bowl. Then we're going to do a quarter cup of lower sodium soy sauce. Now, unfortunately, when I ordered the soy sauce from Walmart, they were out of low sodium. More people are buying low sodium products these days. It's not unusual to find them out when the regular ones are on the shelf. So we're going to use regular today. I also want to show you, though, one of the, something I use at my house. There's alternatives such as the Sprague's. Bragg li liquid aminos. This tastes 
so good. It's a soy sauce flavor, and I am able to use a little less because it's so intensely flavored, which saves me a little bit of, of sodium in my diet. But you can use plain old soy sauce, and this is like a buck and a bottle. So this is five. <laughs> so we're going to take the soy sauce, measure a quarter of a cup, And then we're going to put that in with our garlic and ginger in, our, in the little bowl. And then the last thing that we need, let me give them a pot of stir here. Oh, it smells good in here. We don't even have all the goodies in yet. The next thing we need is a teaspoon of sugar. Now you can use, easily use Blenda if you need to cut out the sugar in your diet. You can use a little less in here. It doesn't really make it sweet. It just enhances the other flavors. Sugar jar. All right. So, if you can see, I'm just going to mix all this up. All those little pieces are the garlic, and the little clumps are the ginger, because I use the paste. This smells so good. This smells like something that you'd want to dip wontons in or even egg rolls just on its own. So you just mix that up a little bit. Then, if you follow along in step three, I'm actually making sure that I'm telling you correctly. <laughs> so, in step three, we're going to dump this in. Make sure we get everything out of the bowl. Stir that around. And then, the only vegetable prep we have to do is open the bag. I have a pair of kitchen scissors. I don't know if you guys have them. These are not expensive either. Actually, I think you can find them at Dollar Tree now. I use them for all kinds of things. These are strong enough that I can cut up raw chicken, um, you know, or I can just cut open plastic bags like this. So I'm just gonna cut the top of the bag off. And there's our coleslaw mix. And we're going to dump it in. Seems like we're always doing dump recipes, huh? I'm going to stir that around, and if you see, you start stirring the meat and onion mixture around with the coleslaw mixture. And the heat from that meat mixture you have in here starts wilting the cabbage, so it actually starts the cooking process pretty quickly. And then another thing I have on here, and this is really optional, is I have a bag of already cut matchstick carrots. You can get these at the grocery store also, already cut for you. And if you notice, they're like little strings of carrot. And these are, this is really handy to put in all kinds of things, including like if you're making some vegetable soup. Calls for half a cup, and I'm just gonna guesstimate it with my hand. And then we're going to stir those in. So actually, we're just going to keep cooking this and stirring it until everything gets wilted and it's cooked, but it's not completely cooked through. You want the vegetables, the cabbage, strings, shreds to be a little bit still crispy tender kind of not really crunchy but have body to them and that's a, a chewiness that's what makes it I think so good so we're gonna let that cook a little bit and stir it and then at the end we're gonna add um, a little bit of black pepper you can also add a little more soy sauce and a little more sesame oil either to the pot when you taste it if you want to or you can add it to the bowl when you eat it either way it doesn't really matter it's all, all what you want to do um i do oops do want to tell you though that there's some other things 
I like to put in. Depends on the mood I'm in, I guess. But uh, this is bean sprouts. Mung bean sprouts come in a can. Um, La Choy is usually the brand that you find everywhere. Uh, some stores have another brand also. But I open these and I um, put them in a colander, a small mesh strainer, and rinse them really well and let them drain really well so that they kind of get a little dried off before I put them in. And that's a great addition to the egg roll bowl. Also, you can get bamboo shoots in a can and they're long pieces and I just lay them out and kind of cut them into thin strips. And this is like if I'm feeling like I want to have a lot of other things in there, make a bigger bunch of dinner. Um, celery is really, really good in here to clean celery and just slice it in thin slices, the, the stalk, and throw that in. And so you can really pack this full of vegetables, um, nutrients, and, and it's absolutely delicious. It tastes so good you don't even realize that you're eating healthy. So, I'm going to keep letting this cook, and rather than you watch me stir it for five solid minutes, I'm going to come back, and when I do, I'm going to show you the finished product in a bowl with the chips, and then we're going to work on the next recipe. So, I'll see you in a minute. 